Wow, great coffee. Should be, it's Boulevard Coffee. Sponsor for Coffee and the Candidates. Candidates for the Los Gatos Town Council, of course. So join me, Larry Gersten, when we interview all the candidates for the Los Gatos Town Council. Hi there, welcome to Coffee and the Candidates, the 2022 version. We've done this before and we're doing it again because we think you need to know, or hopefully you'll want to know, something about the candidates running for election to the Los Gatos Town Council. I'm Larry Gersten. I'll be with the candidates. Today we have with us Rob Stump, who will be uh, talking uh, to us about uh, various issues important to him. And we want to tell you that we're brought to you by Los Gatos Community Foundation, uh, Boulevard Coffee, and of course, KCAT. So grab a cup and join us as we talk to Rob Stump. Welcome. Thank you, Larry. Glad you're here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, first I want to thank you and I want to thank KCAT for this opportunity. A little bit about myself. You introduced me. My name is Rob Stump, but because this election is plumb full of Robs, I'm just Stump, as you can see up there. Uh, trying to avoid Rob confusion. Yeah. Um, I've been a resident of Los Gatos for 50 years. That includes a little bit of bridge time from growing up in Los Gatos, being gone for about eight years, and then returning to Los Gatos. Um, and I have uh, grown up, like I said, in Los Gatos, third generation Los Gatton. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather was called here in 1924 by Los Gatos Baptist Church, First Baptist, so that'll give you an idea. My father was born on the high school lawn. Mm. except the high school wasn't there then. So I'm probably the only candidate that can make that claim. Um, again, uh, what's been very important to me is growing through all Los Gatos schools, Louise Van Meter, Raymond J. Fisher, Los Gatos High, and uh, we now have children that are the third generation Los Gatos High folks. So I, I would say that I've got a lot vested and invested uh, in the community of Los Gatos. On the professional side, um, I've been in the, the business world for 43 years, executive positions for 25 years, working for Fortune 500 companies and with Fortune 500 companies. I never expected to be running. Uh, in fact, my wife, before we got married, laid down the law. And she said, there's one thing I don't want you to do that begins with a P. Yes, dear, what would that be? I don't want you to be a politician. And so I've had to convince her, Larry, that this is actually community service. So, so far, uh, she's buying into that. And that's wonderful, but tell me a little bit more about what you've done in Los Gatos community. Yeah, great, great question. And Larry, I've been a net commuter. I've been commuting outside of Los Gatos. And so in a lot of ways, I've not been as even connected with the community as I would like to be. But in 2017, we had a connecting event. A home burned down in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We live up in the hillside of Los Gatos. And all of a sudden, our neighbors woke up to the realization, and that was literally our burning platform, that we have a serious issue potentially with wildfire in the hillsides of Los Gatos. So in 2018, I approached the town, beginning with the town council members, said, we've got to be doing more. And by the way, I'm not here to throw rocks. I'm here to help. So I'm here to volunteer my help. So for the last four years, I've been working with the town council, the town staff, the community, to bring back, to bring some really meaningful um, uh, improvements as it relates to making our hillsides safer from wildfire. In 2019, I was appointed to an ad hoc wildfire committee. Uh, I was actually named the chair because I stood up at a town meeting and said, if you do this, I'll be the chair, right? <laughs> well, be first meeting, what you wish for. exactly, <laughs> first meeting, they said, congratulations, you're gonna be our chairperson. And out of that, we determined our top priority was to save lives. Because even in the foothills of Los Gatos, and people don't believe this, we could have loss of life in a catastrophic wildfire. So we came up with uh, programs to reduce roadside fuel reduction, emer enhance emergency communication systems, um, and look at roadways, evacuation routes, and make sure that there were people that had a safe way to get out. There's a lot more work to do and on the council that is one of the things that I will continue to push forward. And that is important to do. Uh, the areas outside of downtown, uh, yeah. where sometimes they just get overlooked. Yeah. Uh, but it does take us, of course, to the rest of the town. Right. Uh, the, the downtown area, the residential areas. What do you see the most, as the most important goals 
uh, beyond that very important area about uh, making sure the hillsides are safe, what do, you, what do you see as the most important goal for you as a, as a uh, town council member if you're elected? Well, the, let, let me just make one more comment about wildfire, Larry, because I'm either the Paul Revere of wildfire or I'm the chicken little because the sky is falling. Um, we have over 3,000 homes that are in the high fire hazard severity zone. 3,000 homes. That's a significant number of homes in mm -hmm. Los Gatos. Mm -hmm. A major wildfire in Los Gatos wouldn't necessarily stop on the hillside. Of it course. could literally encroach well into Los Gatos. So again, that's why, like I said, either Paul Revere or Chicken Little. Um, but beyond that, one of my goals is, you know, just a broad goal is to bring the sort of approach to working with the town and the community to my time if I'm on the council. It's a collaborative approach. Make sure the community's got a voice and the community's involved. Make sure that the town staff is involved, obviously the council being involved, to work on problems collaboratively instead of, and I'm a big believer that the community can't step back and say, mm. what are you gonna do, right? right? It's your problem. Yeah, exactly, right? your problem. What are you going to do? No, no, what are we gonna do? Come help us out. And so I believe a lot in volunteerism and getting people connected and involved in the community to achieve the goals that we need to achieve. Well, that's good. Problem solving, embracing the community is terrific, but what problems do you think need to be solved? Well, you know, we obviously have one big problem in front of us right now is the whole issue related to housing uh, in Los Gatos. And the one thing that I am hoping to be able to do is really focus forward on housing. There's been a big dust up over this issue and housing density and so forth. But bottom line, we've got a number that's been given to us by the state, a mandate of 1,993 homes, plus the magical 15% buffer that we need to plan for. That is the job of the town council, obviously in concert with the town staff. We really need to do good planning. We need to provide objective evidence that what we are planning can actually be accomplished. And the one step I wanna take it beyond, Larry, I'm a real believer that we do need below market rate housing in Los Gatos. We've talked about it, but we've not been able to bring it. And it's a significant challenge because of the cost, construction and land. So I do think that, you know, the, even town council needs to be more involved in that, in dealing with developers and talking with developers about projects. We've got, we've got police officers, firefighters, teachers. Think about all the employees we have in the town of Los Gatos that are supporting the businesses or they're working in town government that would actually like to live in Los Gatos, but because of our property values and prices, they they're really precluded from that. And boy, it's shocking. But, you know, poverty, low, low income in the county of Santa Clara, $117,000 a year, family of four. Yeah. $117,000, but that family can only afford a home from a mortgage standpoint up to about $500,000. Show me a $500,000 home in Los Gatos. And that's what we've got to focus on. We've got to help make that happen. We just can't sit back and say, we've done the planning, hope that somebody comes in and we'll be willing to do this development. To that end, um, some cities have gone so far as to create housing uh, for teachers uh, right. and for right. law enforcement. Right and either make it available for them at a sale price, so to right, speak, or right. underwrite part of the rent. Um, what do you think about that? I think it's a great idea. The challenge with Los Gatos is we own little ne next to no land. And in a lot of cases, I've seen this in Jackson, Wyoming recently when I visited there, uh, Jackson owned land. And so to be able then to develop uh, housing on top of that land made it much more affordable. Our, our land probably starts out at about $250,000 per parcel to support a dwelling unit. I'm not even talking about in the hillside. I'm just talking about plain vanilla parcel, $250,000 for the dirt. Well, what about, um, we, we've talked about uh, housing that has to be developed because of RENA, uh, right. de high density housing, right. uh, townhouses, right. Uh, right. apartments. Right. What do you think about the idea of the town subsidizing some of the cost of yeah. these housing housing that would in fact larry you know you're probably getting beyond my pay grade where, right now with the town council because i don't really know what sort of bonds that would probably have to be done through floating some sort of bond well would you, you know? be willing to to do that i mean, I mean I'd be, I'm, I'm trying to find I'm out i'm willing to consider all options is what i'm willing to consider even to the point where you know in the town of los gatos for below market rate housing 
we may have to begin thinking about multi-story mm -hmm. options. Yeah. Like even perhaps out at the North 40, we still have half of the North 40 to develop. And so there's 20 acres out there to develop, which I believe ought to be a mix of residential and commercial. But it could also be a great location for below market rate housing and, and multi-story because in that neighborhood, we've got the Stanford Cancer Center across the street that's a five-story building. So I would say it's not out of character mm -hmm. with that part of the town of Los Gatos. So we're talking about all the money that the town can spend to ah. make it a better place and yeah. it wonderful. Uh, and that they gets, don't have. It gets right. It gets <laughs> to the next point we're discussing, and that right. is the deficit. Right. About a $2 million deficit right. for the next five or six right. years. Yeah, uh, or it could be more. We, or it could we be do, more. We don't, yeah, we don't now, there, know. now, there is a, a measure on the ballot, of right. course, uh, to change the business tax structure. To maybe we'll pull in maybe a million dollars right. a year. That's still right. a delta of another million. Yep. Okay, Coach, you're going to be on the, uh, on the council. Where are we going to find that money? How are we going to deal with that? Well, um, coming out of the private sector, I'm a big believer in you look at yourself first, I meaning you look at your own organization. It's never a winning recipe for the private sector to say, what well, we need more price increases, right? Uh, what about competition? Private sector and government are not the same thing. I fully understand that. But government has to take a close look at itself. Are we operating cost effectively? Are we providing the services that our community wants and desires? And oh, by the way, and by the way, Larry, I'm not trying to create panic in the streets here. Should we build it or should we buy it? In other words, we've maybe built all these services, but has that been the most efficient way to do it? Can those services be delivered in another way that would be cost efficient? Because if we're going to go and say, town, got some bad news. We need, to, we need to have some revenue increases. So whatever that might look like, get ready. We have to earn the trust of the community to <coughs> have the right to go forward and say, we need to look at revenue enhancements for the town of Los Gatos. So we got to look inside our own house first, and we've got to look for all those efficiencies that we can gain and take it a step at a time. Fair enough. If the town is fairly efficient, because there are a lot of people who've been working on that over the years, right. although new eyes always right. see things that right. old eyes don't. Right. Uh, if the town is fairly efficient, would you be open to some sort of a revenue increase uh, to keep the services we have? I think we have to look at that, Larry. And the other thing, you know, I hate to bring wildfire back into this mix, but the town never has budgeted ever with the idea that we would have this kind of growth in our hillsides. Yeah. And the planning that was done 50 years ago, I'm not complaining about what anybody did, but anybody did because they enabled people to live in those hillsides. I've got a 1,400 foot water line. Why? Because San Jose water doesn't really come into my neighborhood. God bless the town. They allowed us to develop that. But what about the fire protection? Yeah. Zero. So there are many things that need to be done in this wildland urban interface where I could see one of the ways the town could shed uh, revenue responsibility for that is to basically go to the voters inside the wildland urban interface, those 3,000 homes, and say facts are. We need to do roadside fuel reduction annually. We need to do. We need to build up some of our roadways that are that are not in good shape for evacuation purposes. We need to enhance our communication systems on the hillside. We're talking millions upon millions of dollars potentially to harden our hillsides. And I don't think it's fair to go to the rest of the the, the citizens of Los Gatos and say, "Hey, we moved into the airport. Now we're going to complain about airport noise, right? We moved into this zone." We pretty much knew what we were getting into. It's up to us as kind of that sub community to come forward with dollars so that we don't place a burden on right. the town of Los Gatos for additional revenue so and maybe, additional services. So, sorry, I didn't mean to step yeah, no, So ahead. maybe a parcel tax, if it's going to be done for that area. Could be specifically, uh, on the specifically for that area, down to parcel number. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, let's go back downtown. Um, which is, yep. we can't overlook that. I uh, know. Traffic through downtown, yeah. especially during the summer. Yeah. Um, everybody bemoans it, right. and so far nobody's come yep. up with an answer. Uh, what are your thoughts? If elected. If elected. <laughs> if elected. <laughs> no, the reason I bring it up, Larry, is because I'm, I'm frustrated that we have seemingly, and again, I'm not pointing criticism at anybody. I'm just saying we've seemingly kind of given up on that, that traffic congestion in Los Gatos is the equivalent of world hunger. And it just isn't. 
But the problem that we have is that it's a regional issue, but to a great degree, the other communities around us, I think, just sort of salute us and say, good luck with that. You're on your own. Yeah, all these, you know, everybody comes streaming through Los Gatos. So we've got to take some different approaches. We cannot accept the fact during wildfire season that we can't get through. There, several weeks ago, there was a fire on Montevita Road, five acres. The fire department couldn't get there. They're yelling at people, nicely, of course, pull over, pull over, yeah. part part the way, right? So we can get up Highway 17. That's not acceptable. I talked to somebody up in the, um, up on Glendale uh, yesterday. Um, her husband had a medical emergency over the weekend. Yeah. And she just said, yeah. we, there was no access. It was total gridlock. So we can't take the approach that nothing can be done. I think it's, there's some short term and then some mid, mid to long term things that we've got to look to. Short term, even in our own community, we've got to look at, have, do we really have our lights on the major arteries of our you know, ingress and egress points? Are they timed so that we can get mm. flow of traffic? On weekends for beach traffic, we probably need more signs in some of these neighborhoods and they've got to be enforced. Sorry about the enforcement piece. No right turn or no left turn into this neighborhood, period. And so those are some things we can do immediately. We also need to be talking to the mapping companies again like Waze. And we need to come up with better solutions. There are other jurisdictions that have. They literally say, oh, all we need to do is say this road is closed. Great. That road is closed. So take it off your mapping algorithm. The town for a while um, uh, cut off yeah. access to Highway 17 from downtown. Right. And I, and I thought that the state got on the town's case and told I us not to. I think that's the case, that they, you know, that, that's sort of a state, state's all, oops, jurisdiction here. Right. This is, you know, this is legal access to the highway. So, yeah, that did go on, I think, for a couple of seasons, Larry, yeah. where we had that going. But I'm going to say the, the midterm, uh, I, to me, before the next fire season, we have got to have a regional and interagency committee that comes together and we bring them right here to Los Gatos and say, this is a problem. And it is a regional problem and it's an interagency problem. What are we going to do? And the answer is nothing is not a good answer. Yeah, it sounds like the way you're discussing it, the Board of Supervisors would have to be brought in because it's, it controls all the- California Highway Patrol. I mean, it's like you're talking about all of these agencies that have some piece of responsibility around right. highways, around you know, it's Los Gatos jurisdiction but we cannot just accept that there's nothing we can do. What do you think about the parklets that have been developed? Uh, some people say it's cutting out parking, it's other people are complaining about the uh, exhaust, uh, other people think, ah, oh, it's a touch of France or something like that. I mean, what do, you, what, what do you think? I've always been concerned, number one, Larry, about safety. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably why I'm not a bicycle rider, because mm -hmm. even though there's, there's a bike lane out there, I'm really putting my life in a driver's hands that maybe has no desire to hit me or kill me, but it's an accident. Yeah. I look at some of those parklets and I put my hands in my head, especially the one at uh, University Avenue and West Main Street that's a, a um, kind of a T intersection right across yeah, yeah. from right across from that. Yeah, that's got a coffee roast. Yeah, and so you're kind of going, oh my gosh, if somebody hits the gas instead of the brake, they're into that parklet. Uh, so safety has been a real issue. It's a real balancing act because we had to do something to help our, our, our um, especially our restaurants, you know, during COVID. Um, I would have to say I'm, I'm sort of split and divided on the whole parklet thing because they're now becoming permanent. It does exacerbate our parking issue. Um, and, uh, you know, th that's something that I'm, I, I need more study on parking because I'm not quite sure where we're at. Would you favor um, cutting off traffic uh, at let's say Highway 9 or someplace near there, all the way downtown uh, on uh, on uh, Santa Cruz Avenue to uh, to solve, first of all, the concern about a car hitting one of these things. You're talking or, about on a permanent basis, Larry? Yeah, or in the evenings, maybe from four yeah. o'clock on. Look, I think, like for example, the chamber has done these promenades, right, yeah, where it has Thursday been nights. shut down. Right. And it's been, those those have been very well received. Um, I strutted my stuff out there on, on one of those evenings and just bumped into friends and neighbors that I knew not knowing what to expect. And mm -hmm. so I think um, on occasion, it's a great thing to do. 
But uh, not, not on a yeah. regular basis. We probably no. I don't think on a regular basis. I think we probably also have to be looking probably more fall <laughs> and spring until we can sort out uh, beach traffic, which that may be world hunger. Well, Rob Stump, not to be confused with any other of the Robs thank on the you. ballot. Thank uh, you. Remember, it's Stump. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us today. Larry, in thank Coffee you. And the candidates. And thank you for watching us, brought to you by, of course, Los Gatos Community Foundation, Boulevard Coffee, and KCAT. And uh, watch this uh, issue and others to come, and uh, enjoy your coffee for the rest of the day.